Hi guys and welcome to this which is the final part of the 6138 uh, rebuild after we've looked at the chronograph problem with regards to the hour counter recorder and you can see here that I've got the sub dial hands attached so we've got the calendar works refitted the day date and all the components that allow the quick change in the daily change um, I've not filmed that because it's just a straightforward process of reversing the removal procedure which you've seen in my previous video um, if that's required I will be um, looking at others uh, very similar uh, in design so I can always film that if uh, if people would like that uh, but it's essentially as the Haynes manual says a reverse of the removal procedure um, so those have been we've, I've gone ahead and refitted those the ring that the dial sits on can only be fitted one way you, you physically cannot fit that incorrectly it has a notch a square notch cut out for the stem where the stem goes and two cutouts for where the dial feet go which is roughly sort of there and there you physically cannot get that wrong you can't put that in the wrong place it's not possible because you cannot get the dial feet in if you do so don't worry about um, not knowing which way around that goes um, with that in place the dial is placed on held in place and the dial, uh, dial feet screws are tightened what I've done then is I've uh, done a start, stop and reset of the chronograph. Holding the reset button, I've aligned the hour and the minute counter um, hands with the 12 o'clock position. So we'll be back in a couple of hours, uh, but for you a mere few seconds to see if that's counted accurately and if it snaps back and resets accurately as it should. And, um, and once we've established that, I can then continue and refit the rest of the components and recase it. In the meantime, I'm going to go and give the case, while it's completely disassembled, a good thorough clean and get all the dirt and gunge out of the nooks and crannies. And then uh, it's going to be ready for reassembly, at which point I can re-grease all of the seals and we can refit everything.
So where are we with the 6138 UFO um, repair, rebuild and what have you? It's completely reassembled. It's back together. The, um, the automatic winding bridge and oscillating weight have been refitted. The case back is screwed on and the case, the pushers, the bracelet, everything has been cleaned accordingly. We've got the uh, day date change mechanism set accordingly as you can see there and then the day shortly following. The problem with the hour wheel counter constantly running and not resetting has been rectified as you could see in the time lapse. Uh, that does work and, uh, and it resets accordingly. All uh, the pushes are nice and smooth. So a little bit of resistance to them, which is exactly how they're supposed to be. But the actual pushes themselves are very nice and smooth in the tubes. So I'm really pleased with that. However, there is one little problem. I have a suspicion. Now, bear in mind, this is the first time I've worked on a 6138. So because of that, I don't have any others to compare them to, with the exception of this just arrived bullhead, which I have to work on. The crystal for which is there. This is the original crystal which is a little scratch which is anyone that's used to Seiko Hardlex will be quite aware that that's not a, a hugely surprising thing. Now the reason I've taken this crystal out and given it a clean because it was really really grubby um, as you can uh, get the idea from from this um, nice soup of uh, of DNA skin cells and goodness knows what else that's hiding around that bezel ring. Uh, the, uh, the rim of this crystal was the same. That's all had a wash and been cleaned. And the reason I've done that is because I'm going to do a, a quick test and fit it to the UFO. Because I have a suspicion that the crystal in the UFO is an aftermarket one and the shape of the underside is incorrect. Now, I don't know how easily you can see, actually you can see that quite easily on this. You can see that this is flat-ish on the top, it has a slight curve to it, but inside it's shaped much like an, acry um, an acrylic crystal would be that you can get for most watches. So you can see that it curves upwards, follows the curve of, of the glass, the very gentle curve, but it has distinct sides on it. Now this crystal in comparison, which I will show you once it's removed, doesn't. It's flat on the top, it's completely flat on the top, rather than slightly curved like this one is. And the curve underneath is a gradual gentle curve up to the middle and down to the edges. And I believe that that's the problem of this seconds hand. Now with the chrono running dial up and uh, pendant down and what have you, it's absolutely fine. It ticks away fine. And the amplitude is, uh, is, is near enough chrono running or chrono not running as you would expect it to be uh, with a Seiko chronograph and that's all fine but once it's dialed down there's the, uh, a problem where between about 10 and 20 seconds on the dial uh, or 10 to 25 seconds on the dial the amplitude slows which shows that the second hand is still contacting the glass. Now I've this particular seconds hand which I believe to be original because it's quite a faded yellow I've refitted that and I've staked that back on as far and as firmly as I dare. I quite literally daren't push it any further for fear of damaging the uh, the seconds hand or the pivot itself. That's staked down as far as I dare, and it, it is actually seated slightly further than the second hand of the bullhead, which I, uh, I also took the glass off to take a look at this, to just get a comparison to see, for example, if I was maybe being a little too cautious and I could actually stake it down further. Now, as said, I, I don't want to push that down any further. I just don't do that for fear of damaging something. And obviously this was staked down with the jewel on the chrono bridge supported. And uh, I've also very, very slightly curved the tip down. And uh, I, I say very slightly because it is very, very slightly and gently using brass tweezers and with a very, very gentle motion. 
because the hand is painted too extreme and it will crack and chip the paint off so that I don't want to do because as I say this does appear to be the original hand I don't want to cause any visible damage to it so what I believe is happening is that this is an aftermarket glass and I believe it should be this shape I might be wrong and I might be missing something else I have had a look at the seal because I did read that the seals can get compressed which causes the glass to sit closer to the second hand but the seal looks like it's brand new and in comparison to this one uh, on the bowl head which has the same setup which where it's all held in place by the uh, tachymeter ring it seems in very good fresh brand new condition so I don't think that that's the case so I'm going to try it with this crystal from the bowl head and see if that rectifies the problem which I suspect it will and I think that is where the problem lies with this that aside it's in really really nice condition other than a little bit of excess oil on the automatic winding parts uh, they were over oiled a little bit everything else looks really good it looks really clean inside the dial side was really really clean as you saw in the uh, strip down and rebuild and uh, the uh, the top side with all the chrono components again look really clean maybe a little bit excess grease on a couple of the um, the chronograph parts but not so much that it would cause me concern and the amplitude is running at a very healthy 240 to 250 which for a Seiko is very very good a Seiko of, of a certain age is very good as anybody will know and they tend to run at a lower amplitude anyway and the positional variation is also very good so I think the only remaining problem this is is workable and usable as is but obviously there's that little bit of a sweep area there where we're getting a little bit of drag on the center seconds hand so what I'm going to do is show a time grapher reading with the original crystal in then I'm going to swap the crystals and do a time grapher reading again. This is in dial down position to show, to demonstrate what I'm talking about. Excuse the shaky cam footage, but I'm just filming this, just filming the time grapher on my cell phone to save moving things around. But here we've got the, um, the watch is dialed down on the time grapher with the chronograph not running. We're currently running at an amplitude of 242, uh, 0.1 millisecond beat error. This uh, reduces to zero dial up. And so 240 ish, uh, this has wound down over the course of a couple of hours or so. And it was given about 250 prior to this. So this is the chronograph not running. Start the chronograph now. And in a moment, you should see a slight spike and a decrease in amplitude as we can see just happening there now you can see the amplitudes dropping uh, 225 and the trace is leveling out a little bit as this exceeds the 25 second mark it will level back out again And it will do that right the way around so I'll speed this next bit up and here once again you can see the drop in amplitude and the rise in rate at which point if I stop the chronograph you'll see that immediately picks back up to where it was so it's without a shadow of a doubt it's the seconds hand that's catching on the glass that's doing this in dial up position this doesn't happen so what i'm going to do now is pop off the bezel and swap out the crystals and try that again while i just have both crystals out i'm just going to take this opportunity to show the difference now you can see there we've got the beveled edge but most importantly if i can get this to show on screen rather than a distinct edge internally hopefully you can see this is actually just a curve it's smooth right to the edge like so whereas this one from the bowl head 
is there's a distinct edge there so the crystals are the same size which you can see there so yes the crystals are the same size as you can see there and uh, other than the internal profile they should pretty much fit the same so what I'm going to do now is pop this one from the bullhead which obviously this is just a temporary check um, but it's just to see if if that then resolves the problem which I strongly suspect it will I'm just going to snap this back on um, with my case press and I'm not going to bother unduly about aligning it at the moment because this is, is literally just for test purposes and then we'll have a look at the time graph of results here's the UFO with the crystal from the bullhead fitted you can see the profiles pretty much the same uh, very very slight doom to it but pretty much the same so I'm going to pop that onto the time grapher and there it is dialed down so let's start the time grapher and as before we've got nice healthy amplitude in the high 240s and I'm going to start the chronograph as soon as the second marker shows up. Chronograph started. And what we should see here is very little difference. Excuse the noise, that's me uh, knocking the table where the time grapher stand is and exactly um, as I'd anticipated uh, that is chugging along nicely and very little change to the amplitude and to the trace in general I'm quite happy with that I'm going to regulate this as is now and uh, knowing that once the crystal has been replaced it will run pretty true to, uh, to the reading that we're getting at the moment. As you can see, the chronograph stops and resets as it should with all of the pointers snapping back to the 12. Overall, I'm very pleased with this one. It's, uh, it's a really clean watch. It was very clean inside. And although I was slightly disappointed that I didn't get to do a full uh, strip and rebuild on this, um, just purely for the video, I will hopefully be able to demonstrate on this little fella right here, this being the bullhead that was mentioned previously. Although I do have some other watches to attend to in the meantime, so this uh, this won't be happening in a huge hurry. But uh, for those that are interested, I, I do hope to be doing a strip and service on this. But there's the 6138 UFO. I think it looks absolutely lovely all in all. It's, it's really nice and clean. It has very clearly been looked after at some point and once this crystal is replaced with a, a proper Seiko part because I do believe this to be an, an aftermarket one it should be fine the watch has been running now for 24 hours with the chronograph running since uh, or up until the point where I just reset it as you saw a second ago and checking the time it is keeping time very well so I'm really pleased with that. That's with the chronograph running in, sitting in dial-up position. Obviously with the crystal replaced, that will resolve the problem with the very, very slight amount of drag in this sector right here, as mentioned. I hope you've enjoyed this series. It has been quite a long one with some lengthy videos, hopefully not too long uh, for you to watch, but I hope you enjoyed it and uh, we will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.